Bam! Scotch Test Dummies coming to you from the set of the dummies. You didn't know I was going to say Secret location. That. Secret. You don't know what's going Area 51. Us. We could be in a bunker. We got Templeton Rye, six year. Boom. And you would want this if it was Armageddon and you were in a bunker. Well, let's test it. Test it, we shall. Test it! <laughs> We're back! Templeton Rye, six year. You know what? This is an MGP. Of course it is. MGP. We've talked. Indiana. You know what they're doing? We did the Dickel Rye, not unaware that it also is an MGP. Not unaware or unaware? Unaware. Unaware, yeah, we were totally. Not aware, aware I think I was going to say, right? Yeah, I don't know what you said, but it was confusing. Um, but MGP, so Templeton Rye, MGP Rye, they source it. Templeton Rye. Casks it, ages it, puts it out. I'm sure we didn't even get that right. No. There's probably more steps than that. Well, probably. Boom. But there is a four-year and a six-year. Now, I'll tell you, the reason I bought the six-year was um, Matt said, side-by-side, side, the six-year stands head and shoulders above the four-year. we got to do the verses. That's what I told you when I bought this. I told you to go get the four, but you said no. I don't always listen to you. <laughs> I should have. That sounds like a great idea. What was I thinking? <laughs> maybe because I wanted to be the one to buy the six, you bought Probably. the four. Probably. Yeah. Maybe that was it. I'm like, what? You just decided? Yeah, you just that's bought right. the six and I'm locked into the four? Yep. Yeah. Well, the four is cheaper. Bam. But it's apparently head and shoulders below. <laughs> this one. Now we're on a rye kick. We're loving the ryes. We have a plan for the end of the year. We always do a top five. We'll do a top five scotch, top five bourbon. We're talking about doing a top five rye. So we are sliding in a few more ryes as the year yep. closes out because we want to give you a top five rye. I've really, really warmed up to these ryes. I think just over the last couple of years, ryes have really they have grown in popularity. Right. I mean, even and bartenders had, are using it more uh -huh. for mixes and stuff. Yeah. And we've had we've had several. We've picked up a few. Not really like, hey, it's time for a rye, but it's just like, what well, this one's recommended. You know, we shoot the Sazerac rye. Someone says, hey, you got to try the Rittenhouse rye. So we get the Rittenhouse rye. Someone says, you got to try the Pikesville rye. So we get the Pike. It's this vicious circle. Now she says, we'll try this one, and someone's going to recommend another one. We're going we're, we're to have to put off the top five until we can go get the new one. Right. Something new is going to come out. I There's so much new coming out that we are in heaven. There's uh, Scott's talked about this before. We started out, we thought, eh, we're going to probably run out of shows because there's not enough spirit out there. And we in were our just, area. Right, in our area, in Kansas. We were just doing scotches. And then we started to blossom out and do... And uh, Catalan from Taiwan, and uh, Yavasaki from Japan, and then we got a Sullivan's Cove from Australia, and uh, and then we started doing some bourbons, and then some ryes, and we're like, oh my god, the world's so big, <laughs> there's so many, we don't have enough time. Now we're doing live shows. If you guys have not checked out our live shows, different pace. Scott's generally in his office, I'm generally in mine, and we have a guest. Now sometimes it'll be just you and I. Um, those are almost always on Sundays later on, but we've had some people from across the pond that we're having on <laughs> from other countries. Mm -hmm. So the times may differ, and Scott's doing a heck of a job. If you go to scotchtestdummies.com, right there on our webpage, he will tell you when the next live show is, time and the date. Yes. Almost always on a Sunday. And we tweet it out as well. We tweet it. Do if you, you're not you put following it on Facebook. No, that brings up a question. I am crap at Facebook. <laughs> All right, I'm just telling you, crap. You don't even have a personal Facebook account. No. Um, I do, and the first thing I found out is because I have a personal Facebook account, if I set up all the defaults, the show goes to my personal account, which mm -hmm. I put a couple mm -hmm. on there now and then, but it's not our Scotch Test Dummies Facebook account. 
I am late posting our videos there. So I, I, I don't think the whole Facebook thing is not user friendly. Kind of. You've got right. you've got your personal page and then a sub page to that, that is a dummies page. And it has to be linked to your personal page. And so I I've gone in and tried to post stuff to the dummies page and it posts to your page, even though it's showing that I'm on the dummies page. And and maybe we're dumb. I don't under, maybe I don't we're know. dumb. I'm sure there's like a millennial that would be like, What? You didn't yeah, do the thing and the thing and the thing and the thing and then like, swipe oh, just, it. No, you just click here. Yeah, click. Yeah, you're right. It's click. Just click right click there. Click that. Changes your. Or it'll read your retina, and you just look at that area that's done. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, you guys are old and dumb, <laughs> right? But I actually typed out a deal, like, because I was getting ready to step away from Facebook, and and maybe even try to talk him into letting me abandon the Facebook page. And so I typed a deal out. Hey, I'm way late posting stuff. Hey. Um, you know, do you find any value in this at all? I'm horrible. I don't get on here as timely as I should. I'm not really engaging in you guys. Overwhelming. I had volumes of like, no, please keep posting here. Even when you post late, it reminds me to go watch something. Mm -hmm. Or I believe the way it falls into their Facebook feed, even if it's two weeks later, they'll be like, ooh, I remember they put that episode out and I wanted to watch it. So there's tons of people saying, keep posting. Lots of people said they didn't care if it was done the same day, the same minute. Uh, they said when I do get it on there, um, they'll see the thumbnail of it and they'll be like, ah, or yeah, I want to watch. Ooh, look at that. He's got the cat shirt on or whatever. Velvet Elvis. That means I got to shut up. By the way, I Bart, this is Scott. <laughs> we're supposed <laughs> to be true. doing that more because we're, we're getting a lot of new viewers. Yes. And they're like, who are, even who are these guys? They just yes, start true. rambling. The tall, goofy dude. Won't shut up. Velvet Elvis is the code word we've created for me to shut up. Which I've noticed, though, actually, when we edit videos on the bourbon videos, I actually put a little picture of us in there, and I label it Scott and Bart. You do. And you don't do that. A lot of extra work. <laughs> he knows this. Some of you know this. I have a whole other channel, a board game review <laughs> channel, Bonding with Board Games. I put out at least three episodes a week on that. We do three episodes here. And... I will admit, I'm being pulled in a lot of ways. Templeton Rye. Templeton Rye, six year. Bam. What do you got? We're seven minutes in. Bonding with board games. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, I sat down. Actually, uh, Cousin Shane came over one night, and we pulled out about four ryes. And this one, I cracked open that night and had it. Um, I have not taken notes on it. I was really impressed with it by that. I'll t I was really impressed with it. Hmm. I'll tell you that much. So, I am going from right now with my notes. But I get a sweet dill, the dill seasoning, a citrus sweetness. Okay. I can get the dill. I don't have it in my notes. My notes, I put down a sweet caramel candy chew. Those little squares. Those little 3D cubes of caramel. I usually say caramel. Caramel sounds a little yeah. better. Um, to me, I can, I can just smell that caramel. And it is powerful mm -hmm. and it's strong. As much as yeah. you can get a peat, or as much as I can get a peat off of Lafroy, I can get the caramel. Oh, the, 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 the caramel was, was uh, more prevalent in the, in the Pikesville. Really? I thought on the nose. I'm getting a strong is, nose here. I do get the dill, though. Mm -hmm. The sweet dill, light oakiness. Uh, citrus sweetness, the caramel. Forty. It is forty-five point seven five percent ABV. Wow. Now on the taste, I get a caramel apple. Mm -hmm. Those little sheets of caramel that you coat the apple with and then bake them. Do you bake them? I don't think you bake them. No, you heat them up a little bit and that melts it on, doesn't it? I think you do. I, do. I haven't done that for a long time. Yeah, I know. The dipping's got to be the better way to do you it. You can, yeah. But that's a lot of work. And as you found out, I'm busy, as we've mentioned. Now, the other one, I got the taste, but I could be so far off here. Rose hips. No. What the heck is that? Well, we've gotten that with, to me, I get that what on some of the Irish. Hips? I get that on some of the Irish whiskeys that are sherry-based. It gets that floral, that rose petal type. Yeah. 
Well, what is a rose Tips. laurel? It came to my mind, so I put it in because I've learned I just throw it in. But I might be way far off on what I even think that is. Well, I've had it in. If you look at um, Tazo Passion Tea, yes, I think that's rose, where I've seen rose it. hips I, and hibiscus in it, and mm -hmm. that's some of the notes that I get. I don't. I'm not getting it with this. I I put it down. I think I'm getting a flowery mm. aftertaste, and I also get. But I also get. Um, it, after that, the, the first like five, ten seconds, I get a cola aftertaste. It's like I got two little aftertastes going mm. on. I like your caramel apple. Definitely. Um, dill seasoning and rye seasoning both. Mm. Almost spit some out by accident. A, uh, a powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar. I'm getting sweetness. A, I'm getting like rose. Rose petals maybe would be better. Hmm. I don't know what that is. It's weird to me. I get a little bit of mustiness, almost like a, uh, almost like a sawdust on it. Odd. Um, Mouthfeel is so-so. It doesn't really, it's, I mean, it doesn't really move in and take over your, your sensories. It's there, it's mild, it's smooth, pretty quick on the finish. It's there and it's gone. Yeah. Again, the nose is delicious on this. I added a drop of water. I'm getting even more of that caramel cube. I really, really love the mouthfeel on this. The mouthfeel, yeah. the nose. I haven't, I'm sorry, I meant to say oh. the nose. But you like the mouthfeel too? Mm. Oh. Even at 45%, it really wasn't that warming. Um, like I say, it's, it's just a smooth, mild, mellow whiskey. The first taste I had of this, I got a lot of mustiness, a musk. Musty and musky. And I was like, huh. So I came back later. It's a decent rye, but I got to admit, it's talked about so much, I expected more. Hmm. So I don't know if all the expectations I had led me to fall short. I've come, this is now the third time I've come back to it. And maybe it's after having the Pikesville as well a couple weeks ago that uh, it doesn't have a lot of complexity going on. It doesn't have a real strong prevalent rye flavor to me. It has a much more of a caramel note that I'm probably more used to with my bourbons, but it's stronger on the nose and to me somewhat weaker on the taste, although I still get that caramel apple. I just I got a like. vanilla, a vanilla with it as well. So this one perplexed me. I, again, um, my expectations I think were higher and it didn't quite meet that expectation. I'm not saying it's bad at all. But I'd heard so much. And I really do want to grab that four year now and just do a, a, a versus with it. Now I will tell you too, it's also labeled this is a rye whiskey. It's not a straight rye whiskey. So it can have, it's got a portion, probably at least 51% rye and then a mixture of other uh, I'm grains. very perplexed on the rye rules. Because even a straight bourbon is only 51% corn. Because yeah, because of the bourbon. So when I hear straight rye whiskey, to me that doesn't tell me that it's all 100% rye. It just I don't know what it means. So mm -hmm. please, the rye experts out there, That's we're true. the dummies. Throw some comments in there. That's true. Because um, I uh, I don't know. I'm not even really up on what the rye rules are. I mean, what is it? Does it have to have 51% yeah. rye in yeah. order to be called rye? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. But I mean, does that mean it's a straight rye? And if it's less than that, I mean, I don't know. So I, I don't know what all the rules are. I know what the bourbon We like is. our comments that come in and say the people that educate us. Oh, please. We're the dummies. Yes. I mean, uh, we're, 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 we're here to tell you what this tastes like. We're not here to walk you through the distillery or the inner workings or who the cooper was. Um, and the, the history and some of that right. stuff. Like, some of that gets a little yeah, yeah. About the, tiring. To some. Some dig it. Yeah. That's not what you're getting from right. us. Boom. This so, is a review of this group. Now I'll tell yeah. you. And right. whimsy. A lot of whimsy. <laughs> All 
Alright. We went with the 88. Um, it's not bad. It's smooth. It's mild. It's mellow. It's about it. A quick, you know, finish to it. Not a real powerful mouthfeel. Um, I mean, it's a, it's it, it's a it's decent. 87. And that's not bad. I mean, there's just I, like I said, I don't know. I I'd heard so much. I, I think I was expecting this to be. 89, 90, pushing into that 90 realm, and it's good. I really, really, this is the one that made me want to do a rye shootout because I think if we can do, and I'll be kinder and gentler and slower, but if we can do a rye and a rye and a rye and a rye, I think I'm going to be like, oh yeah, this is, this is where I feel this is missing, or ooh, this is where this rises to the forefront. And maybe that's what Templeton brings, is maybe it's a, Maybe it's a bourbon drinker's rye. That's the only thing that crossed my mind mm -hmm. is maybe there's a bourbon drinker out there that has this and goes, oh, I love that, bourbon, but I love this. That's, you know, that could be pretty close with the, uh, with the vanilla notes and the yeah. caramel notes. Yep. And as, as well as the rye. That's what I was thinking is that this is a, a someone that loves bourbon, this mm -hmm. is a rye for a bourbon lover. I don't know. That's all I got to say about that. Forrest Gump style. I think that's about it. Check us out at uh, scotchtestdummies.com for more information on our next live stream tasting. Thomas, comment. Please subscribe. Subscribing has just gone, it's blowing up. So continue to subscribe and help us blow up. Mm -hmm. Also, when you subscribe, you automatically get the notifications of our show. So when that rye shootout happens, mm -hmm. it'll just hit your, uh, hit your uh, email feed. Mm -hmm. So, please do it. Uh, if you got a couple extra bu bucks at the end of the month and you don't know what to do with it, you can uh, check us out on Patreon and help kind of crowdfund us. Kind of support bunks. us a little bit. I thought you were going to have a need a place bucks. to sleep. <laughs> we might. We might need to. Scotch it, you scotch gods. Slauncha. Wait. Oh, yeah. Is it worth is it? Is it worth it? Stop. <laughs> rewind. No, nope, rewind. Just go. All right. What is uh, it? What is $45. it? $45. Really. $45. Um, I think if you're a bourbon drinker, it'll be worth it at that price. For me, this is not worth it at that price. Yeah, I think so. I agree. This should be less. 25. <laughs> That's funny you said that. That's the exact number I was on, and I was afraid someone would be offended by such a low number. I mm. think that's where this should be. If you're a bourbon drinker, I think this is your rye. And I believe that's why it's been elevated from some of my uh, bourbon friends. Well, I tell you, I wouldn't buy it. For 45 I wouldn't buy it again. How much is yeah. the for you? I don't regret buying it, but I wouldn't buy it again. I'm with you. And, and I definitely want to do a versus with this. And I think the four years are 30. Goodness. Okay. But or I will purchase that. I will difference. purchase the four year. We'll come back. We'll do a versus. Um, but I believe this is a bourbon drinker's rye. And now, my friend, we shall scotch it, you scotch guys. Salon, <laughs> Dummies. Dummies.